Uh, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and we're very happy and very honoured to have an opportunity today to be able to talk to you about the Akashic Realm. It's one of our favourite subjects, but one that we haven't had an opportunity too much here to talk about. But um, as you begin to open up, as you begin to connect more and more with yourselves, you can start to connect more and more with your history, your personal history, the history of your planet, the history of the galaxy and of the universe. So when you learn the basic principles, everything becomes available. It is simply a matter of you making a vibrational selection, choosing what you want to learn about, what you want to access, and um, then stepping into that frequency. So the first thing we want to talk about here, and we'll try to keep things in a relatively linear fashion, but we do go off on a lot of tangents, and we do that with intention because it, it requires you to stay really focused. So see how we are. We're making you work right out of the gate. So if we really lose you, feel free to jump in, but we'll try to keep it rather linear. So the first thing that's important for you to understand about accessing the Akashic Records is that it's not something that um, you've got to study for years and years to do. It's not something that only a special few can do. It is something that all of you, each and every one of you, do every single day. But you're not doing it at the conscious level. You're doing it at the subconscious level. So what we're sharing with you today is hopefully going to help you to start doing it consciously when you want that information. So it's making a vibrational selection. Now, what are the Akashic Realms? The Akashic Realms uh, is a vibrational range, if you will, in which you are selecting and viewing information. And each dimension has its own version of an Akashic Realm. All right, there is a, it's like a, if you want to think of it like a film on a lake, all right, that top layer would be um, the Akashic Realm. It's where all data of all experiences within that dimension is stored. Now, as an individual or as a soul has experience, raw data is recorded, and that is at the source level, all right? It's just raw data, information, and it can be viewed through all different kinds of filters to color it. Then within each of the dimensions, each dimension is set up so it's a unique game. It has uh, rules and regulations, just like you're playing basketball or soccer or football. Each game is different, and you go to each dimension in order to have a unique experience. So within that dimensional structure, you've got all of these filters that a soul puts over its perception of reality in order to have that experience of that dimension. Are you with us so far on that? Mm -hmm. So down here in the third dimension, the game is duality. The game is density. The game is one of separation. So you see yourself as being separate from source. In no other dimension do you perceive reality in a linear way. And that's a key point as we, as we go here. We're going to talk about multidimensional reality and reading records multidimensionally. But this is the only dimension in which you think you are linear, that you have multiple timelines going on all at once, but your focus is so intent on one of those timelines that you think that's all that exists. So you've got the blinders on just to see what's right in front of you. And that's your linear version of reality. So down here, you think that you're separate from absolutely everyone and everything. That's part of the game that you're playing in density. You think you're separate from source. Um, there is positive, negative, male, female, light, dark. You can't have one without the other in this version of the game. Now, when you get up to the higher dimensions, the rules change. As you make the transition into the fourth or fifth dimension, where you're all headed here, you are shifting your perspective from a linear one to a multi-dimensional one. So you see all the other timelines that are going on right beside you, and you get to pick and choose which version, what you want to look at. And we can talk a little bit more about 
um, that as we go. But we want to just kind of give you some broad strokes and then we can get into the finer detail later on. So in the higher realms, the games change and you have different filters. Now within your body, you have the ability to access all 12 levels of dimensions of density uh, of consciousness. You can access all levels of consciousness within your own vehicle. All right. Now you don't stay in those levels of consciousness because if you did, then you're going to be playing in another game. All right. But throughout the day, you can go up and access these different levels and layers of consciousness. And you all do it. Um, to give you an example of when you're doing it, say a friend asks you for advice and you give them um, your two cents on the topic. And then you look back and you say, wow, that was pretty profound. Where did that come from? All right. What you've done is you've tapped into another dimension to retrieve the information. You have tapped into a higher level of consciousness most likely gone into the Akashic Records to get the information and pulled it out. All right. Now, what level and what layer you want to go to depends on the filter that you want the information from. So if you have, um, if you're playing a game and somebody tells you all the rules to the game, they tell you uh, the end of the game, what it's like, it kind of ruins the game, yes? They tell you, if you're, you know, you're, you're sitting down to watch a game that you've taped and they tell you what the end score is, it kind of ruins the game, no? So what you will do is choose a vibration or choose to go to a particular level of the Akashic Realm in order to not spoil the game, all right? So you're not always going to go up and get information directly from source where there are no filters because it's too much, it'll, it'll spoil the game. So you may just go up uh, a, a dimension. You may go up to the level that your higher consciousness or your oversoul is residing at. And those are different, your higher self and your oversoul. They are different levels and different organizers of your incarnations. And depending on what you're trying to retrieve, you'll go to the most appropriate dimension to get the information. So to backtrack just a bit, each of these dimensions has your library. And then within each dimension, there are all different kinds of libraries that exist. You yourself are a walking library. You can think of yourself as the paperback version of the experience. All right. All the records of all the experiences of your lifetimes, of others' lifetimes, uh, of past lives, future lives, uh, everything that's gone on in the universe is stored within your energetic field. Now, most of that data is, um, how shall we say this? It's compressed. It's archived. To use your computer terms, you may have archived the data because you're probably not going to access some of it. You're not going to access universal information while you're down in the third dimension. It's just, um, it's not needed. All right? It's not going to serve you to have it. So you archive the data. So most of what's showing up in your energetic field in the here and now is everything that's come down from your genetic line. So all the experiences of all of the people who've donated their DNA to your genetic line show up in your energetic field. You've got a level, uh, a layer within your energy field that stores all of these records. Now, they are compartmentalized for dimensions. So Dimensions three through six have one level or layer, all right? Seven through nine has another level or layer, and 10 through 12 has another or layer. So really, 10 through 12 is compressed. It's archived. You're not going to go there. You can if you want, but chances are you're not going to access it within your energetic field. It's, um, it's dormant. So you're seeing all of the records of all of your ancestors, you are seeing all of the experiences of your other lifetimes, all right? So uh, be they past or future, because time is non-existent, really, all right? That's the best way we can put it. it, it 
it's an illusion. It's more like a Dewey Decimal System for, uh, to find a record. All right, it's a tag number to find an experience. And that's really all that it is. Um, and the structure of time is different in different dimensions. It's, it would be like different coatings on books and different ways of accessing and moving between the stacks in the library. Well, the reason why time was put on the spot was to control people, actually. Um, well, that's, that's well uh, we would not agree with that. It's part of the game. It's part of the setup. And yes, control is... Like I have to do this, I have to do that. Well, you've got duality. And part of duality is, is control. Well, that's part of the game. It creates the illusion that you have a linear progression of events. And when we get to talking about... Um, when we get to talking more about the Harper probability and how time really exists here in a moment, how you move from timelines, it'll make a little more sense. But uh, it wasn't designed for control. That's your view. Yes. But I respect your belief. So with, um, with all of these records, you've got past or future lifetimes, which are all going on concurrently. All right, so um, it's not that you had one lifetime and then you moved on to the next and then you moved on to the next. They're all going on right now. So within your field stored all those lifetimes and all the information and all the challenges, uh, all of the successes from those lifetimes. And then also you've got all the other information, all the galactic information that's going on as well. So... What's the point of having the information in your field? What is it that would make one want to access this information? What it can do for you is to assist you in seeing what is happening in other lifetimes to give you another perspective. Now, you don't have to know all the ins and outs about any of these other lifetimes in order to integrate the lesson or to work through whatever it is that you have going on in the now. The only place that you stand in your full power is in the moment, in the now. When you are focusing on the past or the future, you're diffusing your own energy. All right? You are, you are throwing energy off onto other timelines in which your consciousness, this version of you, is not focused. So it's, it's like wasted energy. So we're going to back up here just a bit to give you kind of a, a view of the harp of probability. So if you think of a harp, and each harp has a string on it, it has multiple strings, and each string has a particular vibration to it, so does each version of reality. It has a specific, unique vibration. And you are aligning yourself with a particular string based on your choices and where you are vibrating at any given moment. Now the illusion from where you are is that you're only on one string, you're born on it and you finish it on that string. In reality, you are constantly moving back and forth between these strings of reality. Based on your choices in the moment, you are putting yourself in vibrational alignment with a version of reality and you are moving, shifting to that version of reality. Now, there is really no past because all you've got is now. So what you perceive as your past is an agreed upon set of circumstances that you create individually and collectively. So to give you an example of what that means, if you uh, agree that you had World War I, you had World War II, and this is what came out of it, that you as a collective have this history and this, uh, these events, these traumas, these dramas, all these things that you've learned, all these experiences. You agree that that is the illusion of the past that you're going to buy into that's going to affect the now moment that you're having. Are you all with us on that? Mm -hmm. So each of these strings has a unique set of circumstances that create the past. Now, some of them may be vastly different. Some of them may be very minute details that are different. But there are infinite numbers of these versions of reality that you can tap into. 
Every choice you make creates a new string. All right. Now, do you all have that concept of all the strings and see yourself moving constantly back and forth based on the vibration that you're selecting? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to change that so it's no longer a string, but rather they're dots, they're points, because they're not linear. So if you imagine the string and you zoom in and you're looking at it under the microscope, that it's really not a solid line, it's all dots, and you're constantly moving back and forth between these dots. They are disconnected. All right? So... <coughs> We want to shatter this illusion for you that you think that it's solid, that it's a constant, because it's not. And you constantly move back and forth between these moments, these books, these Dewey Decimal points, if you will, of time, the illusion of time. You have the ability within each and every one of you if you choose in this moment to raise your vibration in your consciousness, to connect again with a higher level of viewing so that you can perceive what timelines are available and choose the one that you want to vibrate on and match that vibration and move to that timeline. You all, when you experience um, deja vu, uh, that's a good indication for you that you've moved timelines. All right, very much like your movies that show this. When you find that you have that sense of deja vu, it's a similar timeline, but you've made the hop, you've made the transition. So it's a shift in your perspective to know that you are constantly moving back and forth between these realities. Now, in the higher realms, it's more like uh, how you would watch a movie and fast forward through the movie you get a sense of what goes on, but you don't have the actual experience of it. That's what it's like in other dimensional realms in order to project out into other timelines to see which vibrational selection you think you'd like to make, which one seems in a preview uh, that it would be exciting. And then you get to step into it. You get to put your focus on it. And um, when you focus on it, you project yourself there. And then you get to have that experience. So if you want to think of it as, you know, if you take a, a wheel and you turn it on its side and you're standing in the hub and all the spokes going out, those are all the possible timelines for you to look at and to examine and decide which one you want to experience. So this is important for you to understand because as you start to access records, you have to have an understanding that time is an illusion. And it is just a marker so that you can connect to a particular experience or to a particular record. Truth is not absolute. All right? Truth or the data, as we were uh, talking about earlier, is always colored by the perspective of the dimension and of the being that is pulling the information through. It is impossible unless you go up to source energy's level to view the raw data. You've got to be up and connected with source so there are no filters. And then you can get uh, many, multiple versions of the truth and of the pure data. But truth is not absolute. One of the things that is so vital that you all recognize is that you have got to take the bits and pieces that resonate for you and leave the rest behind. Even with the information that we give you or anyone else gives you, you have got to see which piece of information is in vibrational alignment with you. So which version of the truth is going to be the right story for you? Which version of all of these multiple timelines are you going to tap into and use as a foundation for a building block for a perspective of reality? When we give you information, we look at all of your energetic fields. We look at where you're at, where you're going, and what would best, best benefit each and every one of you. And then we choose the version of the truth that will facilitate you getting to where you want to go, that will provide you with the information that will be of the most assistance to you. And as you begin to access the Akashic realms, remember that you can choose which version that you want to look at. Which version are you going to take on as your quote-unquote personal truth? And 
If you look at a version at one moment, where is your vibration when you're looking at it? Are you looking at it through the third dimensional filter? Are you looking at it at a higher level of consciousness? All right. When you look at it tomorrow, when you've, if you've shifted your vibration, what is it going to look like tomorrow as you filter the information differently because you've altered your filter? All right. So one of the hardest things for you all to get when you're looking at predictions, when you're looking at um, truths, when people are channeling, when people are bringing information through, is that the story can change and it will change based on your vibrations. So it's all about the moment that you're receiving the information, take it for how it feels and then let it go. Because when you check again, you're probably going to get a different answer or slightly different. It may not be completely off the mark. All right? So do you have any questions so far about this before we move on to some of the other stuff? Uh, they are slightly different because usually of how you are filtering the information, all right, um, where your brain waves are. And, you know, your brain waves in different levels and different frequency ranges uh, provide different filters. So when you are in theta, you're removing more of your filters than you are when you're in alpha, all right? So you've got beta, alpha, theta, delta, gamma. Gamma is when you're in a coma. So when you're sleeping, uh, as you drift off down deep into sleep, uh, you're in delta, and that, that's a whole nother level. But you've got to find a way to communicate with that conscious mind, all right? So a lot of times it's through images. It's when you're really in that theta state that you can receive information and the filters and the, um, the imagery can be more direct because the conscious mind can comprehend it. Uh, a little better than when you're in Delta and you can remember it. It's easier for you to pull into reality. Now most of you throughout the day uh, move back and forth. Um, you spend very little time, by the way, in Beta. All right, Especially now, you're moving more and more into the Alpha state uh, where you are lightly suggestible that you are, you're not working with quite as many filters. All right. Save reality, what is that? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> It is your perceived version of the truth. That's reality. That's it. And some parts of reality are shared for you all. Some parts are not. Um, for instance, um, you share a common version of history or of events with those in your community, but not with somebody who's on the other side of the world. Um, the, uh, the war or a war could affect you very, very drastically, but perhaps not another country and, you know, somebody who's uh, living in the countryside in a very um, isolated area. So they're not going to tap into that information that mass consciousness is using. They're not going to retrieve the data. They're not going to use it. It's, ex it's not applicable to the experience that the soul is wanting to have. So it's data that just kind of goes to the side that they're not tapping into or activating. It's dormant. But it's there because they're on the same timeline with you. They're on the same version. So um, it just kind of gets pushed to the side. They're not activating. They're, there's no focus on that information. So that information is not vibrating. It is not um, it is activated. That's the best way you can say it. And that is how, when you're going through these challenging times, that... We can say to you, even though the dollar may devaluate or you may have political change, that doesn't mean that your life has to be filled with drama. You can choose a different vibrational selection. You can still be on a string with other people, other beings of consciousness. Um, you're sharing the baseline of information, but your individual truth, the individual version of reality can be different because there are parts of that that you just are not activating, All right, that are just neutral, the flat the dormant. Does that help? Somewhat. And even though we don't need to know all the information of this particular game, is there a shared goal? Love. And that's it? That's the final. Integration. Integration is this game. This game is a game of dissension, lowering the frequency and increasing the frequency. That's the whole point. Earth was a grand experiment and it was set up so that you could 
see how dense you could go and how you could come back out of it and integrate all of the judgment of duality to see that both parts were part of the whole. There's, they're a part of source energy and you cannot have one without the other. So that's really the game, is integration. And the easiest way to integrate is to hold more joy, more love in your body. And not just love for others, but, but most importantly, love for self. And that's where you all are having a hard time right now. You're lacking self-love. Because you think that you are separate from source. And much of the love that you try to gain comes through other people as opposed to the connection you have within yourself with source energy and re-establishing that connection. Because when you re-establish that connection, what happens is uh, it's like standing in a six-foot wide tube of energy and information. And you have access to the Akashic realms when you connect with source energy when you raise your vibration. You have access to your guides, to your higher consciousness, to your blueprints. All of this information is available. But when you're in stress, fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, guilt, shame, blame, any of the lower frequencies, this huge field shrinks down. So when you're in real fear, it's about an inch wide, your connection. So there's not a lot of information that you have access to at that point. You've shut most of the stream down. So that's why it's hard to see solutions to problems. You feel like you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and it's not changing. You can't, you can't see why you're creating it. Your guides have a hard time communicating with you because you, you've shut down. You can't access the Akashic realms. So you always got to open yourself back up and get yourself heart-centered. Now... It doesn't take hours and hours of meditation to get yourself heart-centered. All you have to do is find an image of an animal or a place, that's our favorite, that puts a smile on your face. So we'd like for all of you right now to find an image. Animals are good because they're unconditional. Places, um, sometimes they're not as highly charged for you as an animal, but whichever one you, you, you're drawn to. All right? So we'd like for you to find that now and take note of how you feel in your body. Do you feel expanded, uplifted, joyful, warm, tingly, happy, connected? Any of those things. This is how you should be feeling all the time. And this is what you're all working towards. When you are connected and when you're feeling that expanded, when you're feeling lighthearted and warm and tingly and all those things, you are connecting with source energy. It's like plugging into the wall outlet. And there is unconditional love that you're tapping into. There is an endless flow of energy. When you unplug, all right, when you drop out of that high vibrational frequency, you're running on backup power. You feel tired. If you feel disconnected, you feel run down. So this is a great exercise. Uh, it's the easiest thing we can give you and the most potent. So if you're, if you're fatigued or you're stressed, try to find this image because it alters your vibration. And once you alter your vibration, you can see things from another level of consciousness. Just like the Akashic Records, you can go to a higher level of consciousness and retrieve information. All right? Make sense? So... Uh, did we answer your question? Yes. All right. I have a question. Yes. What can you tell us about the about fearful energy that's unconscious, subconscious? Well, or if it's fear. at the subconscious level, one of the things that you can utilize to identify it is be mindful of what you are experiencing in the now. Mm -hmm. All right? If you create an accident, if you create an argument, if you create... Um, a situation that doesn't make you happy, that is reflecting back to you the vibration. So you just need to examine it. And you can allow your subconscious to, to tell you what it is. You know, my negative thought that creates this experience is. And the first time you say it, you're going to say, I don't know, because you've got a block and you don't want to know about it. All right? 
And usually around the fifth, sixth, seventh time you say it aloud or you write it out, something will pop into your head. And it may not make logical sense because a good deal of that vibration, because it can be very subtle in the now, but a good deal of that vibration or the intensity of that vibration may be rooted in another lifetime for which you have no conscious memory. So if you think about it this way, if you've got a room full of tuning forks and you strike all the a, a, a single A, all the other A's in the room are going to vibrate through the laws of resonance. So anywhere you have a fear of, say, abandonment, you've created it now in your life, anywhere else in your field, any of the records that you're holding, in which uh, abandonment is the issue, it is the vibration, it will start to vibrate. So the volume, all right, the level of that frequency will increase and you're going to feel it more intensely. And that's why sometimes when you have experiences, you say, I don't know why I'm so bent out of shape or I don't know why I'm so upset about this. It, you know, logically, I shouldn't be upset at all. But yet here I am, I'm twisted in knots. And you've all had that experience, yes? And it's usually because you've activated either a past life or a genetic line issue, all right? You've activated one of these other records in your field. And as you deal with the issue now, as you learn how to find integration, as you learn how to stop judging and see why you created it, how it was of service to you, you, you neutralize the charge to it. And once you neutralize it in the now, you neutralize it everywhere else in your field all the other lifetimes that are holding on to it, you alter that record. You alter that vibrational signature. Right? This is um, holography at its finest. If you take an image all right, and you shatter it, and now it's in 20 pieces, each of those 20 pieces will contain the whole, the whole image. If you make a change to any one of those, that change will show up in each and every part and all the 19 other parts it's going to change so as you change yourself here and now you are altering the vibration and the frequency in that lifetime now that data gets sent off to that other aspect of you and they can choose to run that program to access that akashic record or they can just save the file all right if you've got a particular blueprint and you really want to work through this issue, but if you download this other program, it's going to kind of spoil what you're working on, then part of you is going to say, you know, I don't want to run that. I still want to work with this a little bit more. Other times you gratefully say, yes, I'll take that program and I'll integrate that lesson and see if I can continue on. Um, and sometimes it's not important for that blueprint or that lifetime, and so you will just go ahead and run the program and, and that's that. Do you all understand what we mean here? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. All right. So identifying the fear, identifying the lower vibrations, the easiest way to do that is by observing your life. Because the way that things are created and generated in density, they are first vibrating in the energetic field and then they are projected outward in the external world and it's going to show you everything. It's going to show you where you're vibrating. So that's why we always say to you, be present. Because when you're present in the now, you're not worrying about the past or the future because we just told you those are illusions, as it were. Those are different points on the timeline. So as long as you're in the now, you're in the moment, you can feel your emotions. You're in tune with what's going on and you make new vibrational selections. They're not right or wrong choices. They're simply vibrational selections that you make. You can choose to have one experience and then you can decide, all right, am I enjoying this? Or am I bored with this? Or do I not like it at all because it's, it's, it's dragging my energy down? If you're in the now, you can tap into that. You can know. And if you're focused about something else, you're not going to know what your body's telling you. You're not going to know how you're feeling because you're thinking about something else. You're all up in your brain. All right? Rather than using the multidimensional filter, which is the heart center. All your energy is up here. This is where your focus is as opposed to in your heart center. And if you're in the moment, you can better gauge what, what new choices you want to make, whether you want to repeat the choice. So this is the year of manifestation, 2012, or 2010. 2010 is manifestation, 2011 is activation, and 2012 is transformation. 
So this is the year that you really get to be present and you're going to see everything reflected back faster and faster and faster and you'll be more aware of how you're feeling, what fine-tuning or adjustments that you need to make, want to make, so that you can really get in tune with this system that is your body, your barometer for that projected reality. So that's how you, that's how you work with your subconscious. Look at what's in front of you. And if you continue to create um, experiences that you're not enjoying and they seem to be related to one particular issue, what, what are we missing? Well, sometimes there are different levels and layers to it, so you keep repeating them and getting deeper each time because uh, for some of you, you say, no, I'm not quite ready to deal with all of that. You know, you've just spent a dozen lifetimes trying to work it through, and here you are in the 13th lifetime, and, you know, this is the big game here where you've got a lot of support from the universe because you're being bombarded, you're being bathed in very high vibrational energy as you're moving through the sector of space, and that allows you to integrate for, you, for more of your stuff to come up you can go through the process that we gave you, all right? Sometimes um, another way for you to see is, is what's being gained by you from repeating this pattern. What's the addiction? Why don't you want to let it go? Because there may be a false belief in there, a filter that says, you know, I can't survive if I give this up. Or, you know, I'm going to be judged if I give this up. Or There are all kinds of wirings and games that you all have created for yourselves. And... You keep working with it. Now, you can also work with people who work with belief systems, healers that work with belief systems, and there are different uh, modalities that work well. And again, you know, if you're, you're getting into other lifetimes, you don't have to know all the details, but sometimes another perspective of the issue can help you to release it. It can help you to shift your perspective in the now. So you can do it by yourself. Asking your subconscious to tell you what the key, what the heart of the issue is. Why do I keep repeating it? What am I not giving up? What am I afraid to give up by having this thought? All right. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Because a lot of times you all think that uh, there's something that there's a payoff that you're getting from it, and so you're not giving it up. And it can be really strange wiring that if I give this up, I'm going to die. You know, it can be something as, as, as severe as that, and that can lead into another lifetime where, you, you know, you gave something up and it did cost you your life. Perhaps you were being persecuted. So there are all kinds of scenarios there. But just ask yourself. You can work with regression therapists, preferably somebody who's working at the theta level, all right? Or you can work with somebody who works with the breath, all right? Because the breath activates your energy field. It stimulates the energetic and as you have releases, as you have recognitions of why you created something, what the payoff is, how you co-created it with others, uh, you have a release at the physical level. And then the oxygen moves things through the body. So the, the oxygen and the breath, it's a great connector. So we're very fond of, of the breath and breath work. Tone and sound can also be used, but we think specifically for some of this, um, if you... If you want clarity in the understanding, um, tone and sound may not be the best thing to work with. Um, breath, breath is is our number one choice. All right. Anything else? So, one of the things that we would recommend to connect with the other realms, and it's it's not terribly challenging to connect. All right. The hard part for you all is to trust what you get because it's going to seem like your imagination. Now, your imagination is your connection with source energy as filtered through the third dimensional filter of the mind. All right. In order to have this experience of separation, you have all these filters set up that you think you're separate, that you think you're... Um, that you're this, you're that, you're the other, and all that's processed through the brain, the mind, the ego. When you're heart-centered, you bypass a lot of those filters, and you're accessing information from the higher realm. You can access um, the high. You can access uh, 
the higher dimensions through the mind. It just can't happen. So once you get yourself heart-centered, you're already raising your vibration and accessing it through a different level, all right, where you're getting a higher level where those filters aren't in the way. So how do you do that? You can do the exercise that we gave you, all right, where you're finding something that puts a smile on your face. Um, once you get pretty proficient with that, all you have to do, and, and what we recommend, one way to think of it is a bright light in your heart center. You can see it growing and you can see it expanding. If you want to envision a flower, a beautiful flower, and that flower is blooming and opening, all right, it's your heart center opening out, and take note of how you're feeling. Are you buzzing? Are you expanded? Are you lighthearted? And once you're in that space, the next thing for you to do is to set your intent. I am connected to source energy. I am connected to the Akashic realms. I want the highest level of information based on um, my current understanding that will serve me for my highest good. All right, and you're going to go to the most appropriate level. You don't have to know if that's a seventh dimension, ninth dimension, twelfth dimension. You don't have to know. All you have to do is set your intent that you're connecting with the highest version of the truth for you at this moment in time. Intention is paramount to anything that you want to do, anything that you want to create for yourself. Part of what you're learning at this time is that you are divine source energy. Your God, your source, universal energy, however you want to, want to phrase it. That's you, and that's a very hard statement for many of you to say. Actually, I'd be like for you to say it now. Go ahead. Uh, I am divine source energy. I am God. How did that feel? Great. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you may have felt resistance, especially with the second phrase, because you've got so many programs running about religion and what God is. When you say universal source energy or divine source energy, you're not quite as triggered uh, as you are with the word God. But take note of how you're feeling in your body when you say that. Some of you may have a bit of resistance there. But when you know that that's who you are, that you are divine source energy, it is your right to access all of this information. You have the ability to go anywhere that you want to go. Now what you're doing is fine-tuning, choosing the frequency, and turning the volume up. So, does that make sense to you all? Mm -hmm. so, so, once you get yourself heart-centered, your intention is to connect with the highest vibration for the information that you want. And here's where you can start to use your imagination. Because uh, you've got to start somewhere, so you're familiar with the creative visual, visual part of your brain. So you can envision for yourself a location. It can be a white library, it can be a forest, it can be a mountaintop, any place that you feel is a relaxing, beautiful space for you. All right? And in this space is held all the information that you're looking for. All right? If you're in a white library, there, there are stacks and stacks and rows and rows of books. Now, you are not... Uh, you know, you're not just dropped into the library to figure out, you know, you've got millions of books, which one are you going to pick? All right. There are beings who specialize in accessing the records and the data. It is their sole purpose to assist you in finding the information and the vibrational frequencies that you are looking for. You can call them a librarian. You can call them a record keeper. And they exist within um, each of these dimensional realms. There are different frequencies of beings who who take on this responsibility of being a record keeper a vibrational keeper a keeper of codes a keeper of frequencies these are all the different names that you've had over time for what these beings are and their sole purpose is there to be of support to assist you in finding a particular frequency because they know that you're downplaying a game sometimes you're in density and have no idea that you're playing the game whatsoever but your subconscious or your higher conscious may come and access some records or you can be in a multi-dimensional state and, you know, you're still projected into a game. There are still illusions going on and they're still there to help you. Um, and it's very much like the libraries of today when you want to get something out of the reference section. You go to the librarian and you tell them what you're looking for and they say, I'll be right back. And they bring you a book and there it is and then you can peruse it. You can go through it. These librarians are there to assist you. 
So in addition to asking for the information that is exactly the vibration that you're looking for, you can ask a librarian to assist you. You can ask for help from one of these beings. Each of the libraries holds different <coughs> levels of information. As we started to say here, you are the paperback version. All right, Everything that goes on within your life, within your... Um, within your other lifetimes, past, future lives, within your genetic line, all that's readily available to you in your paperback version. As we said, you've archived some of the other records. Rather than opening them all up from your own field, what you will do is you'll go to another library. It's just easier. So Earth has all of the records of all of the experiences of all of the beings who've been on the planet. The Sun holds all of the records for all of the beings who have lived in the solar system. And yes, there are other planets in your solar system which are inhabited. They may not all be inhabited in the third dimension, but they are inhabited nonetheless. So all of those records, all right, are then stored in a central sun, which is Alcyon. All right, so you can think of it yourself as the paperback, Earth as the branch library, the sun as the main library, and then, you know, your central sun, Alcyon, as the Library of Congress, where all the records are stored. And then you've got galactic libraries. But we'll just stick with these base levels for today. So you can go, you can envision yourself traveling to one of these libraries. If you want to see yourself, um, again, with the visualization technique, uh, you can just go to a library. The librarian can go and do a transfer. You know, she can have it sent over from the main library. All right, you don't have to go to the main branch to get the record. So if you're visioning just a, a little white room that you're sitting in, the library can go and find it and assist you with that. If there's a lot that you want to do and a lot that you want to access, you can go to the library. You're just projecting yourself there. You're focusing on a vibration, which is the branch library or the central sun library. And as you project and intend that that's where you're going, you find that vibration. That is your natural way of operating. As you intend, your energy follows. As you intend to connect with the library for information, you go there. You don't have to know exactly where it is at. You only have to decide and intend. Your vehicle, your energetic field knows how to operate. It's like breathing. All right, It knows how to do this. You just have to get out of the way with your filters to allow you to go there naturally. So there's not a lot of effort involved. As we said before, the hardest thing for you all to do is to trust in what you're getting because at first it is going to seem like your imagination. But as we said, your imagination is your connection to source energy is filtered through the mind. All right? But it is going to feel slightly different. And it may be subtle at first. You may have an experience where, yes, it does seem pretty dramatic and you know for certain that this is something different. But most of the time when you connect, it is going to feel a bit like you're just playing in your head. All right? Then as you bring the information through, um, we recommend it as you begin, as you start, that you write it down when you're finished, all right? As you're getting the information, allow yourself to be fully present, to get all the information, and then write down what it is that you received because it's going to fade pretty quickly because as you are accessing this information, you're putting your brain waves in another level, and uh, it's like having a lucid dream in the morning. You know, it's very fresh when you first wake up, but then most of it fades by mid-afternoon and by the evening you can remember bits and pieces and that's about it. So for all of you to start, we would recommend that you start writing it out, all right? Uh, or you speak it aloud, you know, if you, if you find you don't have time, if you're in the shower shampooing your hair, you're repeating verbally what, what you remember, all right? Because this gets it through the body. It gets it, it gets it ingrained into physical reality, whether you're writing it or you're speaking it aloud. All right, make sense to you all? And the only limit to your access of these records 
is your imagination. Now, part of the catch with accessing these records is that you've got to ask for it because you've got free will. So it's not that a book is just necessarily going to show up on your doorstep. All right, so you've got to seek it out. You've got to ask for it. So what we recommend for many of you is also to carry around a, a little notepad and as you have questions that arise about things that you want to know about, whether it's other lifetimes or how the universe works, jot it down. All right, Write it out because uh, another time you're going to think, well, I don't have any questions to ask. What am I going to ask a librarian? What do I want to know about? Part of this desire to make the connection with the Akashic Realms requires your curiosity. As children, you are very good at asking questions. Why this? Why that? How? But you got answers like, because I said so, and because that's just the way it is. And after a while, you stopped asking. So now you've got to uh, reinvigorate yourself. Explore your curiosity. And you've got to ask, because if you don't ask, we can't necessarily help you. Now, you can go to the library or you can go to a guide. Whether you're channeling, it's no different than accessing the Akashic Records. It's just a different frequency. Whether you're accessing a past life record or whether you are accessing a guide or whether you are accessing a librarian or whether you are accessing your higher consciousness, these are just different vibrational selections that you're making. All right, so if you're already connecting with your guide, all right, you're somebody who already knows how to make contact, now all you have to do is connect with your Akashic Records. Set your intent, your vibration of where you want to go and allow yourself to know that you're going to connect because that's your intent. All right, make sense? Yes. Any questions so far about this part? You're also quiet. <laughs> We're digesting. It is a lot. And speaking of digesting, uh, here's, here's how we want you to think about it because uh, you all get very caught in your head, especially when we start talking about multidimensional reality where there are all these different versions uh, going on. Uh, it's very hard because for you, you know only linear reality. You are so ingrained in it that it gets very hard for the brain to figure out what all those different things mean. How is this possible? And the logical mind says, well, this, if I do this, then this has to happen, and how does this work? And it gets you on a treadmill, uh, just like a, you know, like a, a mouse on a, on a wheel. So if you can envision that idea that you're having trouble digesting, digesting as an orb, an orb of information, you want to see that dropping down into your heart center. All right. Within your heart center, you can understand and process all of that information. If you want to think of it as a sieve, all right, as um, information is coming in, uh, when you process it through the brain, the information is too refined. The filter of the mind, you know, the little holes are too big, so all the information just drops through. If you are processing it through the heart chakra, how you experience it is often a sense of inner knowing. You don't have necessarily all the words because in order to understand the information, you may not have words for it. There may be no word in the third dimensional world for that information. But you have a sense of knowing. One way we describe this is, is, is we're working, is we're giving you downloads. We, we consider it packets of information that we deposit. So the words that come out are, it's a nice day, but the information that is deposited is it's 60 degrees, there's a light breeze, the birds are chirping, the grass is green, you hear children laughing, the scent of roses in the air. So there's a lot more detail. But the mind's not going to get it, the heart is going to get it. So when you're accessing the Akashic Realms, some of this can seem, uh, if you're filtering it through the mind, a bit hard to comprehend. It also depends on what information you're accessing. Sometimes there are no, there are no words uh, for what you are receiving. You may only get symbols. You may only get sacred geometry because encoded within the geometry is also information. It's a vibrational language that everyone knows. 
the language of light. Everyone in all dimensions know the language of light. The language of light is coding, and the way that you perceive it down here is going to be through tone and sound. But it is, it's just frequency. All right, it's frequency, and you all, uh, it's your innate language. You all know how to translate it, and sometimes the way that you're given it may be, um, you may be given the language of light. And so you're going to have to feel that information through your center. How does it feel? doesn't need to make logical sense, all right? Because one of the things for you also to understand is that some planets don't operate the same way that you operate, all right? Um, they may have three genders, all right? Here you've got two. Can you imagine what it's like to have three genders on a planet? All right, so if you're accessing a past life where that happens, go with it, all right? It doesn't have to make logical sense. Um, and know that there's nothing to fear. Here's another thing that comes up when all of you start to access records more and more. Uh, a lot of you have a block for accessing records that there is something that you've done in a past life or that you're afraid you're going to see that's going to be too painful. All right, so there's either shame or guilt or blame that you're still holding on to that you don't want to see that perhaps you played a dark role and lots of people died, all right? Or that you are afraid that um, it's going to hurt all over again. Perhaps you were on the receiving end, all right? And you experienced a rather painful death. So one of the things that you can affirm for yourself before you start to access these records is that I can remember without reliving. I can watch as an observer. I don't have to feel it all. So the difference is like watching a movie. You can empathize if you want, but you're not living it, and it feels very different, yes? Mm -hmm. That's one thing you can say. If you're finding that you keep hitting a block, all right, when you first start to sit down to open up, also to know that um, if you're getting a block, why? Ask yourself why. A lot of times it will be fear because of guilt and shame, as we said. Now, it's just showing you that that program is running. And again, if you've got it, you're blocking it in a past life. It's showing up in your energetic field somewhere. You've recreated it somewhere in the now. We guarantee it that you've created it in this life. Because that's how you set it up. You said, I'm, you know, this is the game where I'm going to go through the process of ascension. I'm going to increase my vibration. That's all ascension is. And as I increase my vibration, what I do to do so is to integrate all of my judgments. All right, all these little resonances that are being held, they're all judgments, that's all they are. So I'm going to release my judgment. In order to release my judgment, I see my part as a co-creator. I see how it was of service to me, how, what role I played. So when you're talking about guilt, or shame, a blame that you're holding on to, one of the things you've got to look at and see is your role in co-creation. Before you incarnate, you create a blueprint, all right, of your life. And you ask other beings. Can I ask to, a quick question? Yes. You said that. Is that blueprint our astrology chart? In part, yes. But there's a lot more to it. Um, you've got to have... A, you got to have a way to set the game up. There's got to be some structure to the game. And the astrological charts allow you a natural flow. When you look at all the houses, all right, there's certain things that happen in each of those houses so that you have an opportunity as you move through the cycle to vary the experience. All right, so that's the natural flow of everything. And then when you choose the genetic imprint, uh, the genetic line, you're looking at all of the, the issues that, that are carried forward from your genetic line. You're looking at uh, specifically the issues of the parent and what they will set up in the environment, their own personal beliefs that, that they will project onto you. That's how you choose to set up your own issues. You know, you choose your parents to set them up for you and to hold those beliefs so that you're ingrained in that. You're, you are indoctrinated into that belief system. And it's hard for parents to hear that. You know, because they think, I, I don't want to think that I set up all my child's issues. But as a child, you understand that and say, you know, my mother's a bit neurotic and this affected me this way. So um, that's part of the blueprint. 
um, and, and the time of your birth also is a specific vibration. And that allows you to experience that vibration in its totality as you're working through. 